guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have another book haul for you, so stay tuned. So today I have 24, all of these, these, and these books to haul for you. So I accumulated a lot and I feel so blessed and so lucky because so many of these were gifts and I can't just, I just can't tell you how thankful I am. So these are all of the books that I actually purchased, not including subscription boxes. These, uh, well the first two here are ones that I won in a giveaway. The rest of these were from subscription boxes and then all of these were gifted to me this month and Oh my gosh, guys, you're too kind and I love you. So let me start with these that I've got in my lap here. This first one is so pretty and I'm so excited to have this edition. This is the Lit Crate Joy edition and it's just a, like a sleeve or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. Box jacket? I don't know but the book is like the normal book and it is chain of iron by cassandra clare but look at this gorgeous gorgeous book sleeve cover thing on the back here it says do the nephilim understand what is happening to them it has been thousands of years since princes of hell walked on the earth the nephilim are descended from angels but to them angels are fairy tales a power that exists but is never seen. It is not wise to forget to believe. I am so excited for this. So that is the first book to show you. The next two books actually are the same book but I got them from different places. So one I got from Book Depository for myself and the other I got from uh, Amazon for Xander. So I like the UK paperback and Xander likes the hardcover. So we each have a full set of these. He enjoys reading this series. I enjoy reading it. This is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. This is the third book in the Cassidy Blake series and we both just really enjoy it. And so I'm super, super excited to have this and to give Xander this piece. I can't tell you how excited it makes me when he is excited about a book. Oh my gosh. Oh, but this follows uh, Cassidy Blake as her family goes from location to location. Her family's sort of like um, ghost hunters and they have this whole TV show and stuff, but they're not really actually seeing any of the ghosts. But Cassidy, however, she can see the ghosts and talk to them and even step into their world a little bit. And I think the first book was Paris, if I'm, if I'm remember, remembering correctly. No, I think the first book was Scotland, the second book was Paris, and this one is New Orleans, if I'm correct. Yes, Cassidy's map of New Orleans, Louisiana is in here. And this is what the hardcover looks like without its jacket. There's uh, this really cool design with like some pretty design but a skull in the middle. I don't know if the camera can pick that up at all because it's on the white, but it's pretty. Next up is a book that I got because of a video I watched of Kayla from Books and Lala, and I'll link her channel down below. But she did this vlog where she read like her Enneagram, and there was a book that I thought was really, really interesting and I wanted to read myself, and that was Millenniagram by Hannon Posh. And I think this just really goes over like the different enneagrams and kind of what they represent and things like that. I thought it was really interesting. Thought I'd check it out. The next two books are books two and three in a series and this month I have read the first book and absolutely loved it and immediately ordered the next two and pre-ordered the fourth one. This series, oh my goodness. So this is Undercover Bromance and Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. And this is book two, this is book three of the Bromance Book Club series. And oh my goodness, 
such a cute series. I don't really know in anything about these except for I think they follow different characters. Uh, but in the first one, the main character, he's coming through a rough patch in his marriage and his wife has now asked for a divorce and he's kind of falling apart and he's a major league baseball player and his friends and teammates, um, they go to try to help him and pull him out of this slump that he's gotten in and introduce him to the Bromance Book Club where they actually read different romance novels in order to help their relationships. And I love me a bookish book and so I absolutely love that book and I can't wait to read these as well. And this last book is one that I actually bought from another booktuber. She was selling them I think on Twitter and that's Samantha from Thoughts on Tomes and I'll link her channel down below as well but she was in the process of moving and unhauling some books and so she was selling them on there and I got from her The Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and this is I don't think it's the fourth book in the Hunger Games series. I think it's like a prequel from what I gather to the Hunger Games series and this follows Snow and I guess how he came to be like he is. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading this though. Very excited. Okay now for these two up here that were giveaways. So this first one is a Goodreads giveaway that I won and that's The Last Lumin Luminian by S.G. Blaze. Blaze? I think this is really pretty. It says, she is a rebel. Lila is fighting on the side of refugees for their freedom from oppression, but there is a bigger war brewing on the horizon. The Era War. The war between the two ruling arc gods that threatens not only Lila's home world, but also everyone else's in the seven galaxies. Enemies must become friends and allies in the desperate race to defeat the arc god before he, he finds her. And it came with a little bookmark too. And then this other one was a giveaway by, uh, through Instagram by the author, and that was Bewitched by Paige McKenzie and Nancy Olin, and it was Paige that was hosting the giveaway. And this says, a lone witch has powers, a coven has a multitude more. New girl and secret witch Iris just wants to get through her first day of school without a panic attack. The last thing she expects is to be taken in by a coven of three witches. Soft-spoken and supportive Greta, thoughtful and musical Ridley, and fiery and spirited Binks. They may be the first witches Iris has met, but their coven is not alone in their small northwestern town. The triad is the other coven at their school. When the triad's not using spells to punish their exes or break up happy couples for fun, they practice dark magic. The two covens have a rivalry stretching all the way back to junior high. When tragedy strikes and a witch is murdered, the rival covens must band together to find out who is responsible before it's too late. Someone's anti-witch ideology has turned deadly, and one of them is next. With an inclusive cast of witches who leap off the page with style and attitude, acclaimed authors Paige McKenzie and Nancy Olin return with a brand new read that will charm readers through the thrilling conclusion. And it looks like this. And she also assigned it for me. Okay, next up are the books that I have gotten from subscription boxes. So this first one was from my Brave Girls Book Club box, but it was from like their December box and it just, just got to me. And that is Tinsel by Sabeel Pounder. It's a tinsel, the girls who invented Christmas. It says, what if something along the way we've all, what if somewhere along the way we've all gotten the Santa story a bit wrong? Join Blanche Claus and her best friend Rinky for a funny festive sleigh ride you'll never forget. And those end pages are super cute. And then this one was the, I think it's the most recent books that matter subscription box books that matter and brave girls book club they're the same company it's just brave girls is middle grade and books that matter is like ya and adult and this one i think is the 
February one. I don't think I've gotten the March one yet because they're coming from the UK, so they get here way late. <laughs> anyway, that is The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo. And this says, scroll back eight, 1800 years to Londonium AD 211 and slip down the side of Grace Church Street. Here roams back alley beauty, a Pulcherima babe, a Nubian knockout with tangled hair and bare feet. Zuliga is a reluctant teenage bride with no idea about true love. She's too busy sneaking out with the slave girls and drag queens until one day she catches the eye of the most powerful man on earth, Emperor Septimus, and the trouble really starts. Silver-tongued and merry-eyed, this is a tale to make the muses themselves roar with laughter and weep for pity. Kaleidos kaleidoscoping distant past and vivid present, the Emperor's Babe sings a song of womanhood and of survival in this thrilling, brutal, breathless world. Alright. Drag queens. Okay, then these two here were my YA Unplugged book box. So the first one I have is What Big Teeth by Rose Sab Sabo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But this says, What you see isn't always what you get. Eleanor Zarin has been estranged from her wild, bloodthirsty family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place she thinks is safe, the home she left behind. But when she gets there, she struggles to fit in with her monstrous relatives who prowl the woods around the family estate and read fortunes in the guts of birds. Eleanor finds herself desperately trying to hold the family together, all the while trying to make sense of a re-emerging re power that seems increasingly linked to the reason she was sent away in the first place. In order to save them all, Eleanor must learn to embrace her family of monsters and tame the darkness inside her. Exquisitely terrifying, beautiful, and fierce, this genre-bending fantasy debut will sink its teeth into you and never let go. So it's like a Red Riding Hood retelling kind of thing. The Big Bad Wolf, but she's the Big Bad Wolf kind of thing. I love a retelling. Okay, next up we have... If I Tell You the Truth by Jasmine Carr, and this is, it follows, let's see, Kieran and her daughter Sahara. Uh, Kieran is from Punjab, and she left there to go to school, but right before she left, the boy that she was engaged to, his older brother, who was a policeman, raped her, and she couldn't have gotten away from there quick enough, and shortly after arriving in Canada to go to school, she realizes that she's pregnant and she wants to keep her child. Uh, her family pretty much disowns her because she's an embarrassment to them and they say that she's lying about everything and so she stays in Canada and once her visa expires, she stays anyway as an undocumented citizen. This starts out in Karen's or Kieran's uh, perspective, and at a certain point in time, it starts shifting to her daughter's perspective. And Kieran is hoping to hold out until her daughter becomes 18, so that then she can use her as uh, a support or something, so that she can get her citizenship. And right before Sahara turns 18, her mother gets busted. And it's just a whirlwind from that point. And it affects this community, not just where, not just with Kieran and her daughter, but the whole Punjabi community. This is an incredibly moving story. I actually read this via Scribd uh, a while back when my wheel gave me um, Scribd Today's Pick and it just happened that on that day this is the book that came up and it really is an absolutely lovely story. I think I gave it four stars. Okay, next up these two are Unplugged Book Box. Uh, they're Adult Box. So the first one we have is The Conductors by 
Nicole Glover. And this says, from a bold new voice comes a vibrant story of magic and murder set in the aftermath of the Civil War. Hetty Rhodes and her husband Benji were conductors on the Underground Railroad, ferrying dozens of slaves to freedom with daring, cunning, and magic that draws its power from the constellations. With war over, those skills find a new purpose as Hetty and Benji solve mysteries and murders that white authorities would otherwise ignore. In the heart of Philadelphia's Seventh Ward, everyone knows that when there's a strange death or magical curses are causing trouble, Hetty and Benji are the only ones who can solve the case. But when an old friend is murdered, their investigation stirs up a wasp's nest of intrigue, lies, and long-buried secrets and a mystery unlike anything they've ha handled before. With a clever, cold-blooded killer on the prowl, Hetty and Benji testing their magic and placing their lives at risk will discover how little they really know about their neighbors and themselves. Sounds interesting. And then this one is a chunky book. This is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. And this yeah, let me see how many pages this is. It's a beast of a book. So there's extras in the back. There's a glossary. Acknowledgements. Okay. So the actual book goes to page 630. This says, Fortune favors the bold. Magic favors the liars. Rin is a con artist who has come to the sparkling city of Nadzira with one goal, to trick her way into a noble house, securing her fortune and her sister's future. But her masquerade is just one of many, and as corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams, the poisonous feud of its nobility and the shadowy dangers of its impoverished underbelly become tangled with Rin at their heart. The Mask of Mirrors is the unmissable start to the Rook and Rose trilogy, a dazzling and darkly magical fantasy adventure by Marie Brennan and Alec Helms, writing together as M.A. Carrick. All right. Then we have the oh-so-kindly-gifted-to-me books. So these first five here, yeah, these first five books were all gifted to me by the same person, and that's Nicole Bannister. She also has a YouTube channel, and I will link that in the description as well. The first one I have here is Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder by Joanne Fluke, and I read this a while back. It was super, super cute, and I, I really wanted to have a physical copy because there's like recipes and stuff throughout, and I really want to like make everything in here. Uh, I want to reread it and make all the goodies. For example, like old fashioned sugar cookies. And there's chocolate chip cookie crunch, or chocolate chip crunch cookies, uh, pecan chews, lovely lemon bar cookies, just all kinds of stuff. This is the first book in the Hannah Swenson series. Hannah Swenson, she works in a bakery and one day on her way to work, uh, I guess next to her little bakery, the milkman gets murdered and she takes it upon herself to start investigating what happened to this milkman and her first suspect ends up dead as well and somehow i don't know how it is these in these cozy mysteries these people are allowed in any way whatsoever to be able to help solve murder cases but that's what happens in them it's a super cute story though and i really really enjoyed it next up we have would Like to Meet by Rachel Winters. And this looks like a cute little rom-com. This says, Can you fall in love like they do in the movies? It's Evie Summer's job to find out, because if she can't convince her film agency's biggest client, Ezra Chester, to write the romantic comedy screenplay he owes producers, her career will be over. The catch? He thinks rom-coms are unrealistic and he'll only put pen to paper if Evie shows him that it's possible to meet a man in real life the way it happens on the big screen. Cynical Evie might not believe in happily ever after, but she'll do what it takes to save the job that's been her lifeline, even if it means reenacting iconic rom-com scenes in public. Spilling orange juice on a cute stranger? No problem. Leaving her number in books all over London to see who calls? Done. 
With a little help from her well-meaning friends and Ben and Annette, the adorable father-daughter duo who keeps witnessing her humiliations, Evie is determined to prove she can meet a man the way Sally met Harry, but can a workaholic who's given up on love find a meet cute of her very own? And this sounds amazing, and I really can't wait to read this. I think it's going to be super cute. Next, we have The Wedding Date by Jasmine Galori. And I want to check something on this. Okay, so I knew this was part of a series, and I just wanted to make sure that, yes, it is the first book in the series. Uh, so this was another one that was gifted to me by Nicole. This says, I vow to take thee as my date, to pretend to have and to hold, from rehearsal dinner to reception end, till Sunday do us part. Agreeing to go to a wedding with a guy she gets stuck with in an elevator is something Alexis, Alexa Monroe wouldn't normally do. She's definitely not the spontaneous type, but there's something about Drew Nichols that's too hard to resist. Drew has never found it hard to meet women or to know just when to leave them. But now, on the eve of his ex's wedding festivities, he's minus a plus one until a power outage strands him with the perfect candidate for a fake girlfriend. From the best man's toast to the bouquet toss, Alexa and Drew have more fun than they ever thought possible. But before you know it, Drew has to fly back to Los Angeles and his job as a pediatric surgeon. And Alexa heads home to Berkeley, where she's the mayor's chief of staff, and neither of them can stop thinking about the other. They're just two high-powered professionals on a collision course towards the long-distance dating disaster of the century, or closing the gap between what they think they need and what they truly want. Very cute. And it just so happened when she sent me this, she was sending me two copies so that I could have one and I could give one to somebody else to buddy read. And there was a mix-up in the mail and I ended up getting that package sent twice. So I ended up with four copies of this. So I ended up doing a fun little th thing with my Twitter buddy read group and one of them won the book from that. My friend Clint won the book from that. And then I also did uh, a fun little trivia thing in one of my live shows and somebody won that. And then uh, I also did a giveaway in my vlog that I was vlogging for Spring and reading a thon and so somebody won that. So that was very cool that I got to have all these giveaways because of Nicole's kindness. Next up we have Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. And again, this is still one from Nicole. This is Ico's story. Is that the right name? Yes, Ico from the Lunar Chronicles. She's the android with Cinder and this is her story in like graphic novel form. I love Cinder. I love Ico. I love the Lunar Chronicles, what I've read of it anyway. And so I'm really, really excited to have this and be able to read it as well. Next up, and I think this might be the last one. Yes, this is the last one from Nicole. And this is The Sisters Grimm by Minna Van Prague. And this says, Once upon a time, a demon who desired earthly domination fathered an army of dark daughters to help him corrupt humanity. As children, Goldie, Liana, Scarlet, and Bee dreamed of a strange otherworld, a nightscape of peculiar mists, mysterious falling leaves, and hungry ivy. In the Shadowland of Everwhere, the four half-sisters connected by blood and magic begin to nurture their elemental powers, learning to control earth, water, air, and fire. But at 13, they are ripped from every everywhere and separated. Five years later, the sisters still feel the loss of one another and their supernatural strengths, though they have no memory of either. Meanwhile, the sisters are not only beset with escalating challenges in their earthly lives, they're also ignorant of the battle that awaits. On their 18th birthday, they will be subjected to a gladi gladiatorial... Gladiatorial... <laughs> like a gladiator style duel to the death with their father's soldiers. The sisters only chance for survival lies in rediscovering everywhere. The sisters have 33 days to discover who they are, where they came from and what they can do before they must fight for their lives and those they love. And I am so excited for this. It's a 
It says here, the Sisters Grimm combines dark magic, mystery, and tragedy in a modern fairy tale evocative of V.E. Schwab and Neil Gaiman. Like, yes, please. So excited for this. Thank you again, Nicole. Okay, next up is The Bride Test by Helen Hong. And this was gifted to me by Karina, and she has an Instagram. Her Instagram is she dreams in words, and I will also link her down in the description. And I can't thank you enough for this. I'm super excited to read this. I do still need to get the first book in this series, but that's just motivating me to get it sooner. Let me pull up the Kiss Quotient on Goodreads so I can tell you about it. So the bride test is actually the second in that series. So the first one says, or the first one is The Kiss Quotient, and this says, a heartwarming and refreshing debut novel that proves one thing. There's not enough data in the world to predict what will make your heart tick. Stella Lane thinks math is the only thing that unites the universe. She comes up with algorithms to predict customer purchases, a job that has given her more money than she knows what to do with, and way less experience in the dating department than the average 30-year-old. It doesn't help that Stella has Asperger's, and French kissing reminds her of a shark getting its teeth cleaned by pilot fish. Her conclusion, she needs a lot of practice with a professional, which is why she hires escort Michael Fawn. The Vietnamese and Swedish stunner can't afford to turn down Stella's offer and agrees to help her check off all the boxes on her lesson plan, from foreplay to more than missionary position. Before long, Stella not only learns to appreciate his kisses, but to crave all the other things he's making her feel. Soon, their no-nonsense partnership starts making a strange kind of sense, and the pattern that emerges will convince Stella that love is the best kind of logic. And it says it's a very, very steamy book. So I am really excited to check this out. And I also know that it is an own voices and um, like Helen Huang is uh, also ha is on the spectrum. She has what was known as Asperger's. And so I'm really excited to read this or read the Kiss Quotient and read that. Okay, next is a book that was gifted to me by my dear friend Clint. Uh, he is my co one of my co-hosts for all of our season-a-thon read-a-thons and just a dear friend. And I will link his channel, Reads Readers, down below as well for you to go check out. But he gifted me two, and the first one is Heart Stuffer Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. And I know that everybody loves this. I've wanted to read it for a long time. Clint sent me a little video clip of him after he read this where he was bawling his eyes out and he was like, I'm both of these people. So I'm really excited to have this and to read this. This says, boy meets boy, boy becomes friends, boys fall in love. Shy and soft-hearted Charlie Spring sits next to rugby player Nick Nelson in class one morning. A warm and intimate friendship follows, and that soon develops into something more for Charlie, who doesn't think he has a chance. But Nick is struggling with feelings of his own, and as the two grow closer and take on the ups and downs of high school, they come to understand the surprising and delightful ways in which love works. And I've just heard nothing but good things, and that it's such an incredibly sweet book. And the other book that Clint sent me, he sent this because He's recently read it and really enjoyed it. And also, Kehlani, our other co-host for the season of Thon Readathons, she absolutely loves this series as well. And this is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Hibbert? Yeah. This says, Chloe Brown is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal, a plan, and a list. After almost, but not quite, dying, she comes up with seven directives to help her get a life, and she's already completed the first, finally moving out of her glamorous family's mansion. The next items? Enjoy a drunken night out. Ride, ride a motorcycle. Go camping. Have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex. Travel the world with nothing but hand luggage. And do something bad. But it's not easy being bad even when you've written step-by-step -step guidelines on how to do it correctly. 
What Chloe needs is a teacher, and she knows just the man for the job. Redford Red Morgan is a handyman with tattoos, a motorcycle, and more sex appeal than 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. He's also an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day, which Chloe knows because she spies on him occasionally, just the teeniest tiny bit. But when she enlists Red in her mission to rebel, she learns things about him that no spy session could teach her, like why he clearly resents Chloe's wealthy background, and why he never shows his art to anyone, and what really lies beneath his rough exterior. And this sounds super cute too. And then last but not least, this was so kindly sent to me by Sterling, who is Clint's boyfriend, and I feel has become a friend of mine as well. That is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And I am so excited for this. Oh my gosh. Oh, and it's there's kind of a funny story about how this arrived. So the day it showed up, the mailman set it down like at my front door and there was like goo all over the outside of this box and I like I saw the mailman set it down so he didn't like set it in something whatever was on this box came from inside the truck or something that was sat on the box but there was just like go like some kind of goo all over the box and uh I picked it up and I was like what is this ew and it was kind of slimy <laughs> And I don't know what possessed me to, but I smelled it. <laughs> and surprisingly, it smelled like peaches. And I was like, dude, the book leaked onto the box. <laughs> Luckily, nothing happened to the book. But the book does have a little bit of a peach scent to it now. <laughs> Funny. Anyway, this says... Ooh, there's my little thank you note. This says... In every book we read, no one ever thought anything bad was happening until it was too late. Patricia Campbell's life has never felt smaller. Her husband is a workaholic. Her teenage kids have their own lives. Her senile mother-in-law needs constant care, and she's always a step behind on her endless to-do list. The only thing keeping her sane is her book club, a close-knit group of Charleston women united by their love of true crime. At these meetings, they're as likely to talk about the Manson family as they are to talk about their own families. One evening after book club, Patricia is viciously attacked by an elderly neighbor, bringing the neighbor's handsome nephew, James Harris, into her life. James is well-traveled and well-read, and he makes Patricia feel things she hasn't felt in years. But when children on the other side of town go missing, their deaths written off by local police, Patricia has reason to believe James Harris is more of a Bundy than a Brad Pitt. The real problem? James is a monster of a different kind, and Patricia is, has already invited him in. Little by little, James will insinuate himself into Patricia's life and try to take everything she took for granted, including the book club. But she won't surrender without a fight in this blood-soaked tale of neighborly kindness gone wrong. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited to read all of these. Like, this is such an awesome haul. Like, one of my favorite hauls I've done in a very long time. Like, I love all the books I get, but yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited about all of these. <laughs> so, have you guys read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!